Instructions for Soothsaying That which is blank is borrowed. Nothing is unknown. Destiny is a dab from everything that and will. You need to die to scry language from the dead. Have it swell your tongue, your head. Resurrection comes when forsaken done is your ability to love. Leave it behind. Instead, snake shrouds around and suck. Shape a temporal thread from mouth. Runes are sigils, are lightning, striking, they predict. Write down in clay and ink yourself in, pulling from each to create a twenty-fifth. That which is the dream we dream, a future we glean, an ode in song to someone beyond. The dead let us glance chance, <laughs> but the ruin of destiny is that we have to live it in order to look back and see the meaning. Basically, the poem is um, based on the myth of Odin in Nordic mythology when he um, travels, he sacrifices himself so that he can learn the language of the dead, the runes. And um, runes have um, a history uh, from that point onwards of being um, a fortune-telling device by which uh, people can predict the future. And um, they're used in a contemplative manner as well to reflect on the past and to reflect on situations. So essentially the poem is, um, is a reinterpretation of that myth and uh, just exploring the idea that um, language itself is a way of understanding where we've come from and where we're going. I remember when I first started um, studying poetry at university, I was fascinated by codes, and I wrote a lot of poetry in uh, varying forms of codes and experimenting with codes and how language worked in code. Um, and so I just, it, it's just something that um, I, I, I am interested in runes, and I have a personal interest as well, um, having uh, come across them when I was 14 and at, at the time thinking that it was a role playing game that I was actually finding because I was very much into role playing games, but um, then discovering that they were this 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 language connected with history and um, had their own history and so I was became interested in them then and as a result language as from there in the language of runes um, according to um, Ralph Blum who released the book of runes uh, back in I think it was the late 80s or early 90s he talks about the 25th rune being the rune of Odin which is basically this blank rune and if you if you go through the process of creating your own runes um, there's 24 of them and you're meant to take a piece from each of the 24 runes and use that to create the 25th rune which then becomes the rune of destiny and it's this blank rune that basically talks about filling in um, filling in the gaps by seeking out transcendence and um, by understanding experiences by transcending them essentially. The 25th rune is this idea of um, we are creating our own meaning and inserting our own meaning and have to make our own sacrifices to uh, understand that meaning. I think sacrifice uh, plays an important part in, in any art in this day and age. I think, I think as a as a culture and possibly a society, we don't really place that much emphasis on sacrifice in a day-to-day -day basis. It's more about gratification and what we can achieve and, and who we, and, you know, how we can achieve those goals. Um, sacrifice is this kind of subtle energy, this kind of subtle nuance that runs underneath everything. And I think it, it is an important thing and it practices humility as well. In, in regards to the collection itself, um, the whole the whole breadth of the collection is playful in the sense that instructions for soothsaying may, might be a bit of a heavier, denser poem, but there are instances in there where it is incredibly pay, playful and um, incredibly light. And there's I like the fact that there's a shading between um, intelligence and popular culture and love and sex and then the human's experience within all of those kind of um, environments. And that, that's something that I try to achieve. I believe that the choices that we make set up further choices. So in a sense, I think there's a degree of predetermined destiny. I never think destiny is something that's um, set in stone, so to speak. Um, 
I think it's just a set of choices that arise from a set of choices, much in the way of um, choose your own adventure games. You have a kind of destiny at the end of it, but you reach that destiny by making a set of choices. I believe that you have capacity to achieve understanding and wisdom through through writing, and and it's basically, to some degree, it, it's you you are writing for yourself whilst at the same time writing for an audience. So you have this sense of self-reflection and of understanding yourself and where you're coming from and where you're going. I think a lot of the, the modernists did a lot to make poetry into a high art, but I think the moment that you make something into a high art, it kind of detaches itself from from people and it becomes <clears throat> this thing that is wrapped up in an upper echelon. And then postmodernism to a degree, broke it down, but it made it very cerebral. And I think that for poetry to kind of have its place again in everyday society, it needs to kind of reconnect with people. Um, and again, on the, the on the same in, in the same instance, people need to reconnect with poetry as well. But I think that um, you know, entering um, into what could either be like a, a new human age or a post-human age i think that we need to look at poetry and make sure that it's m connecting with people instead of um retaining this sense of being a high art i don't think any art should essentially be high i think art should just be art and in the same instance i think poetry should just be poetry well, i think australia is standing at the frontier of of being unique against the rest of the world because we do we do want to make sure that you know everything isn't too cerebral we want to make sure that people can connect with with it and i think it, i think it's important in this day and age to reconnect with where we've come from um and mythology is is the one thing that um recurs in in every culture and you know it has flourishes in in um in organized religions as well. And I think it's important to touch base with these concepts because they're essentially some of the greatest stories that were written. And for that reason alone, there is something in them. And I think it's important to, to explore them. And it's something that I enjoy exploring. I have I have this niggling niggling feeling that um, one of one of the current roles of, of poets in contemporary society is to make sure that poetry as a whole is um, repackaged and made reappealing to the youth. I think that the way that we teach poetry uh, in high schools um, is a little bit lacking. I think I think we place too much emphasis on the and it's an interesting juxtaposition. I think we place too much emphasis on the history and and the canon of poetry. And I think what is happening in the instance and what is achievable in the instance is a lot more exciting. So I think for poets, I think one of our roles is to make sure that we are writing poetry, that if it is, if it's getting out there and, and kids are reading it, that it's something that will inspire more than anything kids to write poetry. And I think that that is really important. Yeah, we can... Um, further ourselves and, and further poetry and, and, you know, inspire other poets. But at its heart, I think we should be keeping in mind that we need to inspire um, the children and, and the youth of tomorrow to, to write poetry as well. I like the fact that poetry can play so much. I like the fact that language isn't this kind of static vehicle um, and that, as, as such, it can inspire people with the way that it moves. I like drawing parallels between language and, um, you know, contemporary art and um, even what some people consider to be lowbrow art and just how it can have the same sense of energy and urgency and excitement. Um, what else inspires me? I love the fact that there's... Um, there's the ability to uh, randomly generate poetry through computer programs and stuff like that, handing over a bit of the process to computer programs. And I like, I like the idea that chance operations in that respect play and how we can also incorporate chance operations into poetry. I just like the fact that it can be incredibly vital. And I think that that is important, is that this vitality that it has and this energy, and that inspires me.